Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench for you here. So inside we got our Mobilus 6. So I got a, quite a few modifications that I've done to this little dude. So in this video, what I'd like to go over is the onboard VTX of the Crazy B F4 FR Lite. Uh, the onboard VTX had failed. I only got like one one race at the Joneses in Cincinnati on this thing before the VTX failed on it. So instead of shelving it or throwing it out or, or you know, kind of getting rid of it, um, along with like five other ones that I've had that had the VTX fail on it, uh, I put a Reaper Nano, so that's a Foxia Reaper Nano VTX, I put in it. But there's some things that you need to do so that you can get your OSD on your uh, screen and also be able to use smart audio so there's some things that i'm going to go over in the video i've got some blown up diagrams here so we can kind of go through some detailed information so if you have the uh, mobilus 6 fr sky version uh crazy b fr uh, f4 fr light board with the onboard vtx uh, this video might be for you if you had your vtx fail as well um, this one was outputting like somewhere around four or six milliwatt and as it warmed up it would actually reduce down to where I just couldn't see anything. Uh, so we're definitely rocking and rolling with it now. So that's what this video is about. So stay tuned. Let's get started. So as you can see, I've put a, uh, I've soldered a UFL connector on the front of this quad and I've put a right hand polarized antenna on it. Uh, the reason why I had to do that is because the United States Air Force Museum race required a right or left hand polarization for the VTX output. Uh, so all my quads now have a uh, right hand polarized antenna on them. Um, so I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, but the Reaper Nano VTX has a UFL built onto it, so you don't have to worry about soldering your own into the board, as I did. Um, so we're going to have to disable the VTX in this and do some, some pretty tedious soldering. Um, I have some diagrams here, so we can kind of go through the things that we have to do first. Um, the Reaper Nano VTX is what I chose to go with, so the Fox here... Um, just the size and dimension it was able to uh, with my favoriteest double-sided gorilla adhesive this stuff is amazing um, with just a little piece of that on the Reaper I've attached it to the back of the camera and kind of stabilized that so there's no jello and it's working out really good and like I said the Reaper has a UFL built onto it so pretty nice you don't have to mess with that and then we'll get into some of the soldering on the other side of the board that we need to do so the first thing i'd like to do is go ahead and um, let you know the first thing that we need to do is so we have our board now keep in mind this is the crazy b f4 fr light so this is the fr sky version it has the built-in uh spi d8 receiver it has a built-in vtx 25 milliwatt which is this section here and the first thing we need to do is disable the onboard vtx that's failed us so it's outputting like four or three milliwatt instead of 25 or 28 or whatever um, so that's the first thing that we need to do so if we look here um, I'll zoom in for you here. So if you look at the uh, components on the board, so this is the VTX antenna, and this is where in some of my videos in the past, um, I'll try to link it up here, um, how to attach a UFL. Um, but you can put your UFL and solder it in here. So this is the VTX portion. So basically this, this area right here is the VTX of the board. And this is a 5 volt buck, so it's taking the 1S voltage and it's running into this buck to create a 5 volt um, output for the VTX. This needs to go. We need to, we need to disable our VTX. And how we're going to do that is I just took a pair of needle nose and I had placed it on each corner and I had crushed basically shattering the ceramic 
and then pulling the coil out and uh, taking that down to the end of the board. Um, let me see if I can see in here. I, I, I was going to take this all apart so you could kind of see, but I thought maybe the diagram would make more sense to you. Um, but the VTX portion, let me see if I can zoom in here. So if you can kind of see right underneath the canopy there, that that VTX, uh, the buck booster is gone. These are just the two solder pads. So I've kind of, I've shattered that piece out of there and dug it out and unsoldered that. So those are the two pads left over. And that will disable your VTX. So that's the main thing. You don't want your VTX on board to be uh, transmitting any type of signal because it will interfere with the, your onboard VTX, uh, or I'm sorry, your, your add-on VTX. So if you're going to do a backpack or you're going to do the Reaper or basically any uh, small VTX, you want to disable this first. So that component right there is what you need to get rid of. So once that's disabled, you can come in here. This is the other side of the board and you can solder a wire on to T2. So you're just going to solder a wire on here and make sure it's long enough to run across your board over to the other side. That's where I chose to run this kind of right off the edge there. So you're going to run from your T2 pad. That's going to give you your smart audio. All right, jumping in here from the future real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my quack out here in the beta flight and I'm going to the ports tab and then we're going to look right over here and the original uh, stock board is smart audio but the reaper nano vtx is tramp so depending on whether you're using a backpack or you're using the repo nano um, also the uh, hdlrc zeus nano vtx is tramp as well so we have to change that to tramp and then go down and save and reboot okay so you want to make sure that that's on tramp uh, originally it does come with smart audio so you're you're not going to be able to get it to work if you don't change it to tramp if you're using this vtx so just keep in mind on what which backpack or what vtx you're using uh, whether or not it's smart audio or tramp and then of course in your vtx tables um you know this this is 357 so i still have the original firmware but if you go to 4.0 or higher you're going to have a vtx table somewhere in here and you'll have to load the tramp protocol but if you did not update your uh, flight controller which I have not this is 357 like I said I got one race out of this thing before the VTX went out so it's still on the original uh, stock beta flight firmware but like I said if this has been updated to 4.0 or higher you're gonna have to go to your VTX table somewhere in here and uh, upload that um, so that the VTX uh, protocol will work but in this case, we're using Tramp. Okay, so I just want to jump in real quick and make sure that you understood to change that. Okay, and then here are two capacitors. So what I wanted to do is um, take a wire and you're going to unsheath about that much of a length. So you want that much wire exposed, pre-tin your wire, and then you're going to solder these two capacitors, the back of these two capacitors. You're just going to touch your soldering iron ever so gently to to uh, solder your wire on there and then that wire will go out as well so you need to short these two with wire and then have it go out that's going to give you your video out so your osd information is going to show up in your screen if you don't have this then you're not going to have video out and then right here is the ground pad and the five volt pad. So right here is a five volt and right here is ground. So you're gonna have your black and your red wire and you're gonna run those out, okay? So you're gonna have four wires basically coming out around your board so here. On the other side, you're gonna have the one, two, three, four wires coming over and this will go to your VTX, okay? So whether you have a backpack or, or Fox Air Reaper or whatever you choose to run with, uh, that will go. I went with the Reaper. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but that thing really is small. And I just 
used a little bit of shrink tubing on the bottom of it so you can see, kind of see in there. Let me zoom in for you if you can see in there. But right, right in here, I have some shrink tubing on that so that the board of the Foxier Reaper cannot come in contact with the main flight controller of the Mobula 6. So you can see how tight that is. Right there, you can see the bottom of it shrink tubed. And that also holds my wires. So I have the four wires going into my Reaper. This does add some weight to the quadcopter. However, it's a lot better than having no quadcopter. Um, so at least I can run this as a backup. Um, it's a little bit fatter, so it's it's a little bit difficult to fly. But all right, so once you have your four wires, so you're going to have your smart audio. You're going to have your video out that's on the two those two capacitors. So your video out's coming from these two caps shorted out, and then you'll have your five volt and ground. So then on your on your VTX backpack, whether that be the let me zoom out for you. Sorry. So on your Reaper V. VTX or any of your back to any of your backpack style. So like if you wanted to run a different canopy and you want to use a backpack, I actually have from like this I don't know, this thing's like five years, maybe five years old now. Um, this is a backpack style. So it has the VTX and camera pinned together. Um, so you can see that. So if you wanted to run a backpack style and have a canopy, uh, maybe a custom printed canopy for your backpack, you can do that. And these backpacks were cheap on Amazon. It was like $12 or something, but it had smart audio, ground, five volt and video. Uh, so pretty, pretty slick. Uh, the video in comes from your OSD chip. So your OSD chips right here. Uh, so super slick if you wanted to do a backpack you could do that. So you're going to use your uh, your 5 volt in Right here's your 5 volt in So the 5 volt coming from from the flight controller and the ground coming from the flight controller and then your tramp so you're going to run your uh, smart audio cable to that and then your um, Video so right here so you're not going to use these unless you want to power and ground a camera. Okay. So you can have your camera video go in. You can have your ground. And then that, that would power your camera. These three pads here would power and video your camera. But if you hook your camera directly up here, you're not going to get OSD. You're not going to get that OSD overlay information. So this, this right here is coming from the flight controller. I'm not powering a camera here. I'm powering the camera from the original uh, plug that's on the on the uh, uh, Mobula. So I have my camera video, ground, and 5 volt, um, basically using that stock plug for the camera. The only thing I did was run. I'll, I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see where my wires went. Um, but that's how you do it. So that's the VTX or any backpack basically that has the four. Uh, the four wires like my old my old and trusty brushed quad um, So yeah Let me go ahead and uh, zoom in. I think we kind of got that ex You know self-explained here. Let me zoom in on the back so you can see where my wires are So if you can see in here on T2 pad let's see if I can rotate that There we go so smart audio is on the T2 pad. So between the LED and R2. So that smart audio is going out and around the board. And then right back here, I have my uh, 5 volt and ground. Those pads are really tight to get into because you don't want to solder this 5 volt buck right here. That's for your camera. The camera uh, 5 volt is coming out of here. So if you damage that, your camera is not going to work. So try to get in here and solder in your, your ground. Let me see if I can move the ground out of the way. So you can see the 5 volt is right there next to it. So you have ground and 5 volt. And then right here is the two capacitors I'm talking about. So that was, that was pretty delicate because if you heat up these ceramic capacitors a little too much, you can lift them. So be careful in here and just kind of give them a little tin and then put your wire in here and just touch in just right in the center. 
and that'll solder on your two. You want to jump these two, so short these two capacitors on the back side with one single wire. And that will give you your OSD overlay information. So that's it. Um, let me zoom out. All right, so that's basically it. Um, let me go ahead and get a weight for you. Like I said, it's kind of fattened it up a little bit. It's a 2374. So this is my current racer. Um, this is the one that I, I race with the most. And it's a 2195, 2375. So a couple gram difference. And you can actually feel it when you're flying this. But keep in mind that even my race quads modified uh, beyond the weight of a stock Mobulus 6 because of the antenna, the UFL mod, um, and the frame. So the frame is the beta... Uh, Beta FPV Meteor 65. There's a pro version that's bigger, so it has the ducts are bigger. So instead of being a 65 millimeter, it's a little bit bigger duct, so you can run like a uh, larger prop in it. I think it's 35 instead of 31, something like that. Uh, I just run the uh, the the regular Beta FPV Meteor 65, not the pro version. Um, yeah, I definitely noticed when I went to the shop with my buddy and uh, ripped this around, you could kind of feel the weight of it rather than this one. So even that two grams made a little bit of a difference. Um, I could feel it kind of slide out a little more. But on the other hand, I have a backup quad. So instead of like, a, you know, what is it, $75 or something for that all-in-one now, um, at least I can utilize it for a $20 VTX. So, hey, I tell you what, I, I hope this video helped somebody out there. John, this is for you mainly. And, um, you know, if you enjoyed it or this helped you out, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hated it, <laughs> man, you give it a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.